We will now look at part C of this problem uh, on the um, equilibrium between atoms of different masses. So I copied the result from uh, the definitions from the uh, previous part, part B here. So you can see these are the vectors, uh, relative velocity vectors, capital V, capital V prime, center of mass velocity vector C, and the unit vectors E1, E2, E3. So you can see that the angle between V and V prime is theta, V and C is psi, and the plane that contains V and V prime and the plane that contains V and C is phi. Okay, consider two atoms of this kind in a gas where many collisions occur. The average, on average, uh, the azimuthal angle phi is then as positive as negative, so that we will see that the time average value of cosine phi is zero, and also since v1 and v2 have random directions, the cosine of the angle between them is as often positive as negative, so the dot product v1, v2 is zero. Show that ii becomes on the average uh, this expression where epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 are the kinetic energies. In the equilibrium situation in particular, the energy of an atom must on the average remain unchanged. So in the equilibrium situation, uh, average value of delta epsilon 1 should be zero. So this implies that E2 bar must be equal to E1 bar. So the mean energy per atom should be the same uh, even if the atoms have uh, different masses. Okay, so uh, this is what we had in part uh, A. Uh, so we have shown that the delta epsilon 1 is given by this expression. And from part B we have the C, V prime and V vectors written in terms of the angles theta, psi and phi and also the unit vectors E1, E2 and E3. So we're going to need the dot product between C and V prime and C and V. So you can see that C dot uh, V prime will be uh, CV cosine psi cosine theta E1 dot product with E1 is a 1 because E1 is a unit vector and then we have um, the second term which contains E1 dot product with E3 E1 and E3 are perpendicular to each other so that term doesn't exist that gives us 0 the third term C sine phi V cosine theta E1 dot product with E2 E1 and E2 are perpendicular to each other that term doesn't exist but there is a term that exists which is E2 dot product with E3 so we have plus CV sine theta sine psi uh, the dot product between E2 and E3 gives us cosine of the angle phi uh, and on the other hand, for the dot product between C and V, we have a V vector is V in E1 direction. So it's going to be C V cosine psi. All right. So therefore, we can write C dot V prime minus V. As uh, in CV parentheses, we have cosine psi cosine theta uh, plus sine theta sine psi cosine phi and minus cosine psi. So you can see that this has the form CV in cosine psi parentheses, cosine theta minus 1, 
plus sine theta sine psi cosine phi. So if you look at the time average of this, so if we take the time average, c dot v prime minus v uh, time average, we will get time average of cosine psi, cosine theta minus 1, sine theta, sine psi, cosine phi. These are independent of each other. And in the problem, it is stated that the time averaged value of cosine phi is zero. So therefore, this term will disappear. Uh, so we're left with CV cosine psi average value cosine theta minus 1 average value. Um, so this basically CV cosine psi is the same thing as uh, this one. It's the dot product between C and V. So uh, this is basically the mean value of C dot V cosine theta minus 1. So uh, with the mean value of cosine theta minus 1. So let's take a look at what C dot V is. C dot V the center of mass velocity is m1 v1 plus m2 v2 divided by m1 plus m2 dot product with v1 minus v2. So this is going to give us uh, 1 over m1 plus m2 m1 v1 squared um, minus m1 v1 dot product with v2 plus m2 v2 dot product with v1 and minus m2 v2 squared. So if I take the time average of this one, this would be uh, the time average of the dot product v1 v2 and v2 v1 uh, the others are just constants so uh, since the dot product of uh, v1 v2 averaged over time is zero because we have random directions uh, for uh, v1 and v2 we can say that this term uh, will disappear and we will be left with the dot product C dot V time averaged uh, value to be 1 over M1 plus M2 m1 v1 square minus m2 v2 square. So you can notice here that if I multiply this by 2 and divide it by 2, I'm left with uh, 2 over m1 plus m2, the difference between the kinetic energies epsilon 1 and epsilon 2. So uh, instead of uh, the time averaged value c dot v prime minus v, basically I have as a result um, the time average value of c dot v is 2 over m1 plus m2 epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2 multiplied with cosine theta minus 1. So if I operate the minus sign, if I multiply epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2 with minus 1, uh, 
and cosine theta minus 1 with minus 1. So we can rewrite this as 2 over m1 plus m2 epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 with the minus 1 operated in cosine theta minus 1 becomes 1 minus cosine theta time averaged value. So therefore, if I go back to uh, the expression i, delta epsilon 1 can be written as m1 m2 m1 plus m2 to minus 1 and then for the new result I have here 2 m1 plus m2 to minus 1 epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 1 minus cosine theta time averaged value so the change in the kinetic energy becomes uh, delta epsilon 1 is 2 m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 squared epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 1 minus cosine theta time averaged value so that is basically the result suggested in uh, triple i so this is triple i therefore we have shown that indeed uh, this result is correct and uh, at equilibrium if you look at uh, the time averaged value of uh, delta epsilon 1 so this will be epsilon 2 uh, minus epsilon 1 uh, so you, we will have a certain mean energy so delta epsilon 1 mean value the deviation from the uh, mean on average will be uh, 0 so this is going to imply epsilon 2 bar minus epsilon 1 bar is 0 therefore epsilon 2 bar is equal to epsilon 1 bar so we find that uh, at equilibrium uh, even epsilon 1 bar is equal to epsilon 2 bar the mean energy per uh, molecule or per atom is the same even for uh, atoms or molecules with different masses. So the statement that is suggested by the problem is correct. So let's see what we have done here. Uh, we have looked at what we obtained in part A, m1, m2, m1 plus m2 to the power minus 1, the dot product between center of mass velocity and uh, after the collision relative velocity v prime and before the collision relative velocity v difference is delta epsilon 1, change in the uh, kinetic energy of the uh, first atom. Uh, and we have used the definitions of the angles uh, as given in part B and we have defined these three unit vectors and so that we can write these C, V prime and V vectors uh, using these unit vectors and we take the dot products noting that the dot product of two unit vectors by themselves is 1 and with perpendicular ones is 0 there is only one which is non-zero, which is that product between E2 and E3, that is cosine uh, phi. So we have expanded this dot product, and then we have noted two things. The, when we take the time average of this equation, the cosine phi time average uh, must be equal to zero. The azimuthal angle uh, can be uh, positive or negative. And so the, the, this 
plane that contains v and v prime can have any orientation with respect to the center of mass velocity because we have random collisions and uh, also because we have random directions of velocities v1 and v2 the dot product time average value is also zero so by noting these two we have come to the conclusion that c dot v v prime minus v time average is 2 over m1 plus m2 epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 difference in kinetic energies 1 minus cosine theta time average value and delta epsilon 1 we have substituted this result for delta epsilon 1 uh, bar we have um, epsilon 2 bar minus epsilon 1 bar 1 minus cosine theta bar and at equilibrium delta epsilon 1 bar should be 0 so epsilon 2 bar must be equal to epsilon 1 bar at equilibrium the mean energy per molecular atom is the same even for atoms or molecules that are colliding and have different masses uh, one thing i would like to clarify here is that v and v prime uh, we have assumed to have an angle theta here if you go back to uh, part a of the problem where i talked about um, this equation uh, for the magnitude of v and v prime are the same uh, so this relationship between the vectors v and v prime this is only correct for uh, one dimensional uh, head-on collisions so uh, in general we can have two dimensional collisions and v prime can have uh, doesn't need to be uh, minus v and uh, however the magnitude is still the same that that's a result of conservation of energy so i have only shown it for the one dimensional case here so that's one thing i would like to clarify and finally uh, this uh, problem has really taught us an important lesson um, this the statement about mean energy per particle should be the same in two systems in equilibrium is uh, more general than having identical particles in the two systems even if you have uh, the similar particles in the two systems uh, at equilibrium we have the same condition mean energy per particle must be the same so that is our end result